Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Legends of Sport podcast. I'm Andy Bernstein, your host. And today I'm bringing you a guest that kind of fulfills a childhood dream for me. Um, I got to speak to the great Yvonne Cornwaye, who was a member of the uh, legendary Montreal Canadiens. And uh, this gentleman had an unbelievable career, 16 years for one team playing for the Montreal Canadiens. He won 10 Stanley Cups. <laughs> if you could imagine, that's just unbelievable. A ring for every finger. His jersey, of course, is retired uh, in the arena, and he was voted one of the 100 great, greatest players in the history of the NHL. Ivan was a member of the uh, Summit Series team of Team Canada that played against uh, the Soviets, which was historic, and we talk about that. We talk about all kinds of feelings that he has and opinions about the state of the game today, um, the original expansion into cities that did not have hockey back in the day, and uh, what he's doing today as an ambassador for the Montreal Canadiens. So I hope everybody enjoys this conversation. I certainly did. And as always, I'll see you on the backside. Well, it's so great to welcome you to the Legends of Sport podcast, my friend. How are things? And uh, where are you by, right now, by the way? I'm in Montreal. Oh, okay. It's on, it's on a golf course. It's called Fontainebleau Golf Course, the Club Links. Beautiful. Like any good uh, retired uh, legend of the game, you're on the links, I'm sure, as much as you can be. <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to be there today, but I got an interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't keep you too long, my friend. Uh, thank you, no uh, problem. Listen, Yvonne, this is this is such a uh, an honor for me. Um, first of all, I got hockey in my blood. I go back uh, to the being a kid, going to Ranger games and MSG. Um, I moved out to LA, and uh, I became the LA Kings team photographer. I've been doing that for close to forty years now. So, wow, oh, good yes. deal. So, although I'm I'm mostly known for my basketball photography, um, uh, hockey is is running deep in my family, and uh, I got to tell you that I I grew up at MSG, and it was always incredibly special to go see the Canadians play because my dad, you know, we used to get dressed up in suits, you know, back yeah, in the yeah oh, back, yeah back yeah yeah at the old forum yeah and like I I grew up in very young at the old. MSG, Old Madison Square Garden, then the New Garden. And my dad would always say that, um, first of all, he said, you got to watch the Canadians because they're, they're just different. It, look, the, look at the way they skate. Then he would say to me, and this is the God's honest truth, he said, that Cornway, nobody's faster than him. <laughs> <laughs> so was, maybe, maybe, maybe he was right. Yeah, right. <laughs> so if I, if I share a photo with you, let me see if I could pull this up. Frank Marvich is beside the net, and I'm just, uh, I'm just adding shoot, shooting the puck. Is it, in black, is it in black and white? Yeah, you're shooting against my guy, Ed, yeah. Eddie Jockerman, right? Yeah, yeah, Eddie, yeah. So what, what do you remember about playing against the Rangers? I mean, what, you know, specifically that team? Was, was it fun, well, different? Well, the, the Rangers was very a good a good team. You have to be really really for them all the time. Yeah, you got uh, a few uh, Frenchmen there, uh, uh, Jean Rattel and uh, Roger Gilbert, and right. uh, you know uh, they, they were very good very good team. Yeah, but uh, I think we have good success against the Rangers. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember one year I think we have a problem in the playoffs, but uh, yeah, right. Well, I want to share this picture of you and, and the great Jean Rattel. And uh, yeah, yeah, he was he was one of the great ones, wasn't he? Yeah, that, this oh, was the, at the centennial, right at the, uh, the hockey one hundred. Yeah, the hundred. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so Ivan, I gotta understand something. You're you are a left shooting right wing, right? Which yeah, I don't really understand. I mean, I grew up playing hockey in the street in Brooklyn. You know, I was a the only thing I ever did lefty was shoot with a hockey stick and shoot with my eye as a photographer, but I'm right-handed and everything else. So is that unusual? And why not just play left wing instead of a right wing, you know, left-handed shot? Well, I, I, I don't really know. A junior, I always play uh, right wing. And, and uh, they compare me to Maurice Richard because okay. Maurice was the same thing. Yeah. He, he was a left shooter and he played right wing. Okay. And if you, I don't know if you remember when the when the Russian came uh, here and after 1972. Right. And they, they they had a lot of of players play on on different different uh, like a left wing play on on the right wing mm -hmm. and uh, vice versa, especially in the playoffs. 
uh, in the in the um, penalty shot. Mm -hmm. So when you have a penalty, it was very easy for me to have a quick shot because I was already on on the right side. That makes sense. Did did that? Did you sort of change the way it was in the NHL, or was that that was kind of being done before you? But it kind of became kind of normal I, after that. I, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe the Russian was using it a lot on the power play. Yeah, because you have you have a, a quick shot on both sides. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. so that that was that was a nice thing for me. That was uh, that was a nice uh, nice way to to go around <laughs> the defense and. Uh, Right. And have have a good shot. Yeah, I have I have more net open because I was I was right shooting. So yeah, interesting. So you're one of only a handful of NHL players to play for one team for your entire career. I mean, 16 years with the Montreal Canadiens, 10 Stanley Cups. It's just mind blowing what you accomplished. How special was it for a kid from Drummondville, Quebec, to play essentially for your hometown team? Well. I think it's a dream come true. Uh, you know, you dream you're going to play for the Montreal Canadian mm -hmm. and uh, win the Stanley Cup. And I was so lucky because um, when I turned 17, mm -hmm. uh, the Canadian junior moved to the forum in Montreal. Mm -hmm. So he's allowed me to watch Montreal practice all the time. Right. And uh, after we, so, uh, but, you know, when, when you put your, your sweater on for the first time and you look around you and you get John Bilibo and uh, Henry Richard and, and all the, the uh, I call it the old guys. Yeah. It, it's a hell of a thrill. Yeah. And my first game was in Detroit on the road because yeah. um, they have a lot of injury. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I was not big in Detroit, but I was playing against Gordy Howe, Alex and and all those great names that, that yeah. I was I was going to play again, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I was lucky. We win uh, seven three, and I always said I got the winning goals. I got the seventh one. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first game. You scored the seventh. That was my first game. I was nineteen years old. Oh my! I, I was still junior for the Montreal Canadian Junior. That's unbelievable. So your so you, obviously your claim to fame um, was your incredible speed. I mean that's you know really what propelled you, I guess, through juniors into the NHL. Um, so much so you were nicknamed the Road Runner. <laughs> yeah, you have a that was in New York, and that was in New York. I had that name from the Sports Illustrated. Yeah, I love that. Name. Uh, after the game, the guy said, "Today you were the Road Runner. Nobody could touch you." So, and <laughs> so, the name stayed forever. Is it is it true that that you had longer blades on your skates? Is that a myth or is that true? It's true. It is true. Really? Yeah, it's true. I said why? Why? Because I, I have my my skate was maybe what eight uh, size eight eight and a half. Right. I said because what what, what maybe you you start a little bit slower, but after you start, you go a little bit faster because you got more blade to push on the ice. Right, right. Well, you had you had a great quote, which I'm gonna I'm gonna read. It, it came from the Hockey Hall of Fame. You said, "Quote: People are always telling me I was too small, but I like the fact I'm not big. It was like a good fight to make it to the top." I remember a coach telling me I looked too small to play on his team. All I said to him was, "Try me." <laughs> so, <laughs> so you you saw your size as an advantage, where you know everyone else might have looked at it maybe as a disadvantage. Well, I think it's, you know, you like to play hockey so much mm -hmm. that determination is a lot. Yeah. And I, I, I was small, but I had a good weight. Uh, you know, my weight was uh, over about 175. Mm. And, uh, but competition, I love to compete. And competition, I, I always play against bigger guys than me. Yeah. And uh, especially in, uh, with 16. Mm -hmm. And that was really rough those days. Yeah, and I think my uh, couple first game when maybe we got three brawls, the, the board bench clear. Uh -huh. I said, "Oh, that's going to be a long, a long career." <laughs> but uh, no, uh, and my speed helped me a lot. Yeah, so I had good legs, and and you know determination, and you, if you want to make it, yeah, you, you have you have to go all the way. You know, you mm -hmm. you cannot be intimidated uh, by anybody. Mm -hmm. And you do your job, and if you score goals, you're going to stay in the league. Yeah. Well, let me ask you something, because hockey was a little bit different back in the original six days. And, uh, you know, it was much more physical. The Canadians 
to my knowledge, were not really known to be a physical team, you know, like maybe Detroit or Chicago or Boston. But uh, did you see your share of fights in your career? Well, I got a few. Yeah. Uh, n not too many. I, I, I prefer to hear them scoring goals and win the game. Right, right. Uh, that was my physiology. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it's, it's funny because when you play, you work so hard to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you make a lot of sacrifice to get in the Montreal Canadian. Sure. But after you think you're there, but you have to work harder to stay mm -hmm. for a long time. So yeah. Yeah. We, we had good uh, good uh, information from the players who were playing before. They were winners. Yeah. And, and they said, well, we have to continue to win. And, you know, that's we have to work harder and, yeah. and respect the other team a lot. Yeah. Uh, do you remember any specific fights in your career? You ever get into it like with Keith Magnuson or any of those tough dudes? Oh, no, no. I, 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 was, uh, I was in the fight with uh, uh, Boston Bruins Sater. Yeah. If, if you ever Glenn want to Sater? check it. Glenn yeah. Sater? Glenn, Glenn Sater. One of my he, dad's great friends. He was on my podcast last year. Yeah. He was in he was in Boston and uh, I said well I, he was after me all the time a little bit so I said okay let's go <laughs> and if you want to watch the fight just go to Glenn Cedar and you're back home with his fight oh I got to see I, in fact I'm gonna actually reach out to Glenn and talk to him about I, that I think that was the I think I had two with Brad Park once and uh, really That's but so that, they were short that <laughs> they were short <laughs> That's a good one. Um, <laughs> So, Yvonne, 10, 10 Stanley Cups in 16 years. I mean, this is kind of a crazy question, but was, was one of them more sweet than the other or any of the other ones or, or all the same? Well, I think I got two. Mm -hmm. I got the first one I won when I was uh, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, who won the touch the cup. And, and I was not playing a lot, but I scored a goal for the, for the game, the winning game. Yeah. And, and the picture you have now, it's in Philadelphia. Yeah, in Philadelphia, we beat them in four, uh -huh. four yeah. straight, and uh -huh. it really changed the game after that. Because after we win, it, as a matter of fact, I watched the game last night. They're playing on TV here, mm -hmm. and um, it, it was very important for all the. We, we had the feeling that all the other team was cheering for us, because if we were to lose, yeah, all all, all the goons would come in the league, yeah, right. and, and that would have been. Yeah. win the Stanley Cup that way. Mm -hmm. But we we were we had a big team. We have a team who can play both ways. Mm -hmm. If they want to play rough, we have the team. If they yeah. want to play hockey, we play hockey. And that's why I think we won uh, that series in four straight. And it changed the game. Yeah, man, we hated Philly. We, we <laughs> The Rangers, we, we had a terrible rivalry with them, man. Well, you were not the only one. A lot of people hated, especially the other team, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But uh, well, I'm glad you won that cup. Believe me. <laughs> yeah. So, so when you became captain, yeah, and and there's that moment. That one of the greatest, probably, I would say, one of the top two or three greatest moments in sports is when the captain is handed the Stanley Cup, and you get to hoist it, and then you get to give it to your teammates and yeah. skate it around. And hopefully, it's in your home arena, but it really doesn't matter. What what is that moment like for you? It's incredible, first of all, uh, to be voted by your teammate to be the captain. Yeah, you know, if, if you look, if you look at each other mm -hmm. uh, after a winning cup, you, you don't get tired to win the cup. I right. mean, more more you win, more you want to win. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be the captain of, uh, you know, uh, Jean Bilibo was my first captain. Henry Richard was my second. Right. And I, I learned, I learned about of. Have to be a captain from those two. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, Jean Bilibo told me once. He said, "You know, I was the captain during the the hockey season, but I'm still the captain of the off season. If you have a problem <laughs> yeah. or something, if I can help you on the off season, mm -hmm. I got no problem. I'd be there." Mm -hmm. And how did how did you embrace the leadership role? I mean, that's a, that's a that's a tough mantle to kind of inherit uh, that uh, you're going from Jean Bellevue and, and everything that he stood for, like you just said, on and off the ice. I mean, how did, how did you embrace that? Well, I, I think responsibility, uh, I, I was for that. Uh, I was not uh, a big talker in the room or whatever. And when I go on the ice, I try to do my job. 
And uh, if you lose a couple of games, I was having a meeting with the guys and say, listen, uh, we, we, we go on the road, we're going to have a meeting when we arrive there and talk about the two games we just lost. So maximum two was enough for me. <laughs> After two, I got to get in trouble. There you go. So, <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it's good. You have to talk to them right away. You cannot wait because the season is quick. Yeah. And uh, the games are coming very quickly. So if you have a problem, you, you, you get a meeting right away and you talk about it. Yeah. And the game was just so different back then, even the traveling. I mean, you guys, did you travel by train a lot or was it? Well, that was the three first year. Yeah. We traveled by train. Right. And uh, that, that, that was very long. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. you know, that, that was the way it was. And that was only 16. But after that, when the expansion came. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, we have to go to the plane. That was a little bit better. Sure. What? Well, tell me what your feelings were when the league expanded the way it did, and uh, all of a sudden you're going to places, you know, like Los Angeles and you know, yeah, and St. Louis and places that just didn't have hockey back then. Was that must have been very eye opening for you? I, I'm sure. That was good. That was different, you know, because play uh, 16, you, you play 14 times against the same guys. Mm. You know, you come to to see what they eat the night before the game. Yeah, uh, just smelling to them. <laughs> so, yeah. but th that was a good change, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it was good for hockey because the expansion was a little bit more United States than before. That was only uh, maybe yeah. four teams in the United States, but after that, it, it became to the people know hockey a little bit more. Yeah, you know, it's interesting to hear you say that because so many. Um hockey purists were against the expansion you know and you go to a place like oakland and they're playing in white skates you know and la is kind yeah, of Hollywood right. and all that stuff but but you, you hockey is hockey right and and that's you you have to win you have to play the game yeah, you know? yeah. so no matter if you get the expansion you you have to win yeah interesting so ivan 72 you're on team canada and you're a key player um against the Soviets and there was so much going on behind the scenes politically. Uh, when you talk about hockey is hockey, I mean, it was beyond hockey. Obviously you go in this dramatic game, you beat them on Henderson's goal. He jumps in your arms, you know, um, yeah. how did, how did you and your teammates approach that series? I mean, you know, there's a lot riding on it, obviously. So yeah. We were, we were, we were not ready for them Yeah, uh, because we have a few scouts who went there. Mm -hmm. And said they had no goalies. Uh, the goalie was very bad, and wow. uh, and I think they had a party a few nights before. <laughs> and uh, right. so we were not really, we were not in shape, uh -huh. and that's why uh, we started the game very quickly for the first game. And after that, I think we lost seven three that game. Mm -hmm. So it, it was it was a, a high opener uh, for us, right? And uh, but they they had a good team. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the skating was good and the passing was good, and the interference you don't see, but they were doing a lot of interference too. And uh -huh. uh, they, they had a very good team. Yeah, did you find that their style of hockey was a little bit like the Canadians, you know, fast, crisp passing, um, you know, a lot of teamwork? Um, you know, because I, I remember growing up and we, we would watch them on TV, and it was just a looked like different hockey to me than what I was used to seeing. Well, they like to keep the puck and they like uh, to control the puck a lot. They, they don't shoot in the, in the zone and, and go after it. Right. So they like to, but we start to know the system after that. Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you protect at the front of the net and, and the slot, they call it, yeah. and they like to go around and around and stay away a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important game was in Toronto, the, se the second game we played at. Mm -hmm. I think if we were to lose that game, we would have had a problem to come back and right. win the series. Yeah. But we win in Toronto, and now after that, we say, okay, we can beat them. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter to, to get in shape yeah. and to know what they're doing. Uh -huh. and, uh, and we did well in, in Russia anyway. 
Yeah, who who is coaching your team, the Team Canada? It's a Sender, Iris Sender, oh, with John Ferguson, assistant coach. Of course, yeah. Wow, two yeah. Hall of Famers right there. Yeah, amazing. So, Yvonne, this, this this young kid comes out of basically nowhere. This guy named Gretzky, this young nineteen year old, and kind of sets the hockey world on fire. What was your first impression of him when you first saw him play? Oh well, it's like uh, Guy Lafleur. Yeah. You know, when Guy Lafleur arrived on our team. Yeah, I went back home and I said, "This guy is gonna help us, boy. I'm glad he's, he's gonna play for us, not for another <laughs> team." And, yeah. and I think I'm sure Grisky was uh, was about in the same uh, level. Yeah. Um, those guys, you don't have a ton of them, and what, especially when they play on your, on your team, mm. you're very happy. You know, yeah. you, you <laughs> said, uh, "I think we're gonna win the Stanley Cup," and that's what he did the two, three years in a row. I think. Amazing at that age, really, it's incredible. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, what he did for hockey and, and all the records he set that still stand is just pretty mind boggling if you think about it. Even when he was traded to Los Angeles, yeah, it was pretty good for hockey. I yeah, think. yeah, we got close against your yeah. Montreal Canadiens. I think just, just close. I think there was a little stick incident that might have changed just, the course. Just close. <laughs> <laughs> what was the angle of that stick? I don't know. <laughs> But that was but, a, but we we did we did we did we did be that close to lose too many times so right. that was never <laughs> yeah the daunting place to have to play a, a cup final month yeah for him because so. you know I equate it to uh, going into Boston Garden if you're playing the Celtics you know or Yankees yes, yeah I mean it's just had that that aura and that mystique and then the fans were just you know out of their minds there and exactly. they know hockey I mean I think it's safe to say that. The Montreal fans and maybe Toronto fans, they know hockey pretty well. I mean, it's been in their blood oh, yeah. for a long time. Yeah. yeah. But if you go to the original six team, like Chicago, Boston, yep. New York, they, they were pretty good fans. I mean, you know, yeah. they, they love hockey. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I used to absolutely love going to games. It was amazing. Um, what do you think of the style of play in the league now? What's your opinion of that? I like it. I like the speed. Mm -hmm. I like the the only way uh, I've been saying it for a long, long time. Yeah. Before they did the the new arena, mm -hmm. everything is improving. Uh, the skit, uh, the skit uh, are better. The, the equipment is better. The training is better. Yeah. Everybody is training twenty, you know, twelve months a year. Right. But the the only thing they did improve the ice. Mm -hmm. I, I would not put it Olympic. I would have put it ten feet wider. Really. Okay. The same size long, uh -huh. but 10 feet wider because the speed they have today, they're all road runner today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the speed they have is incredible yeah. and it's so quick. So, they, they, you know, with the two goalies, the 12 guys on the ice at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, but the ring is like to a car race. Uh, a car race. You improve the speed and, and the tracks get smaller and smaller and you improve this. But you have to improve both. Mm. And, and, and the ice, that's what happened. They never improve the size of the ice with the speed the guys have today. So you would, Just 10 feet wider. You would go 10 feet wider and not that's longer, it. Just wider. No, not longer. Interesting. Um, you know, you think about the old Montreal Forum and, and that the ice was there all the time. They didn't have basketball there. It wasn't a, really a multi-use arena. I mean, I'm sure they had concerts and things in there. But, yeah. but, you know, in this day and age, I mean, I work at Staples Center where we have double headers. We'll have a Kings game in the afternoon and a basketball game at night. You know, it's yeah. crazy. I don't know how they can keep the ice, you know, as good as they do, but somehow they manage with tickets. Well, I, I think that was not that many shows. Mm -hmm. uh, we had at the forum those days. Yeah, but the the worst place was in New York mm -hmm. uh, because they had a circus uh, <laughs> uh, for a while, and after that you arrive and you can smell the the circus was there before. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the the ice was not very good. Yeah, but uh, all, all the other place that was pretty good. Yeah, you bring back a great memory. I remember going to games to Ranger games, and the circus. Um, had just left and but the smell hadn't left That's it. <laughs> all, all the sawdust and all the everything it was it's kind of a strange feeling that, that's it yeah uh, so tell me something Yvonne uh, players today are they receptive to the wisdom of a hall of famer like yourself 
Well, I'm an ambassador for the Montreal Canadiens. It's mm -hmm. been a long time. Me and Guy Lafleur, and, uh, Jao is, is with us. Right. And it's very nice to, to meet the guys. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a meeting with all the players before the season, every season, yeah. uh, with the ambassador and the old, the alumni. Uh -huh. And we try to, uh, you know, to, to mix a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we're not there to say what, what they can do, what they have to do, but it's just the, to be friendly with them mm -hmm. and to, you know, to keep going and uh, try to win the Stanley Cup for another time. It's been yeah. a long time. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, you know, you're going to like Montreal, especially we have a lot of rookies this year. Mm -hmm. And I said, you're going to be surprised. You're going to really like Montreal. I know they, they tell you it's hard to play here because you get a lot of reporter mm -hmm. and you got a lot of pressure. But I, I, I was happy enough and, and lucky enough to play all my career with Montreal. Yeah, and I love I love the challenge. I love to be, you know, you have to win and you have to be there and, and you have to give uh, all the time you hundred percent. So, yeah. uh, and uh, they liked it. Well, what a thrill it must be for you to see your your jersey hanging there. You go to a game and it, it must be a little bit surreal, I guess. Maybe thinking about it as a kid and what your aspirations were to just play hockey somewhere and you end up playing in Montreal and having this storied history. That Thanks. was just that was just incredible. Yeah. Um, you take uh, I'm very lucky. I, I, I made the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but but I wouldn't when, say lucky is the, that's not the word I would use. No. Well, I, you know, <laughs> but when, when when you raise your sweater, yeah, and that's me. You know, you 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 did what you have to do. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, it's incredible. Every time, uh, sometimes I go to the Bell Center and I look myself as hey, <laughs> I got to be there for a while. Yeah, you go to make sure they spelt your name right on the back? or Don't worry, don't worry. It's already <laughs> there for a long time. <laughs> so I have a question. There's a story out there. It's like a legendary story that that uh, you were at a Canadian's a, a recent practice, maybe in the last couple of years, and the, the guys just weren't skating well or they just the effort wasn't great. And uh, you just laced up some skates and showed them how to do it. Is that is that a true story or am I here it's weird stuff out there no that's not a true story <laughs> no I, I i sometimes i got a question they said they asked me sometimes they said what how many goals you would score today if you were to play yeah oh i said maybe if i played a power play at regular maybe if between 10 and 15 yeah and they said only that oh, i said i'm 76 years old <laughs> <laughs> I love it. At 76, I'm sure you could do it, my friend. That's amazing. Uh, that, that, that's incredible, anyway. Well, Yvonne, I got to tell you, man, this was such a joy for me to connect with you. And I have to thank Danielle for really helping put us together. And so thank you to her. Um, and, 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 you know, if you ever come in Montreal, I have a nice bottle of whiskey here. Oh, you talk talking name. my language, my man. That's great. So, uh, if you ever come in Montreal, I have to know. And I give you autograph bottle. It's made with the alumnite. Uh huh. Uh huh. So they make only twelve twelve hundred bottles. Oh my goodness. And and uh, so if you come here, I'm gonna keep one for you. Oh, you don't have to twist my arm. If I get on a plane today, I would do it. If we didn't have. Or, or maybe if you send me your address or something, maybe I can send it to you. Well, I don't know. You know, we'll exchange all that because I have something for you too, my friend. But um, Ivan, thanks so much. Um, it's it's kind of a childhood dream to be talking to a great Montreal Canadian like yourself and uh, stay well. I hope you can get out on the golf course. You have a little little time today to get out there today, right? <laughs> no, 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 no problem. I, I keep I keep the day for you. I look forward to meeting you in person. And, and we actually didn't meet in person when at the Hockey One Hundred. I was photographing that, but it was that was a chaotic scene. But okay. uh, very very nice to connect with you. And thanks for all the the great sharing and the memories. And uh, stay well and stay safe out there. It's very nice, very nice to be a part of your program. Thanks so much, Yvonne. Take care. True legend okay. of sport, right there, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to invite me. Yes, sir. Take care. Thank you. Well, folks. That was such a fun conversation with a true legend of sport and a true legend of NHL hockey, 
the great Ivan Cornway. Such a lovely man, a true gentleman, and ambassador for one of the historic franchises in all of sports, the Montreal Canadiens. Thanks also, as always, to my producer and researcher, Veronica Ahn, and a big thanks to Adam Larry of Jarrell Consulting and Danielle Picariello of the NHL Alumni Association for helping to schedule Ivan with us today. Thanks, everyone, for continuing to download and subscribe to our podcast. A reminder that you can find us on the LA Times app and online, as well as your favorite podcast platforms such as Apple and Spotify. Please keep following us on our social media. Our Instagram is at Legends of Sport, Twitter at Legends underscore of Sport. Our blog is Legends of Sport dot blog. And of course, our TikTok and YouTube channels, Legends of Sport. You can find my photography on Instagram at ADB Photo Inc. Thanks, everyone. As always, we'll be back in a couple of weeks with another great guest and another great episode. So keep checking our social media for the announcement. Until then, you know what I'm going to say. Stay safe, stay well, and what are you going to wear? Hmm? Your mask! <laughs>